So I'm actually going to turn it over to Vince Bonham. So Vince is the deputy director of NHGRI and is speaking to us today in his role as the founding director of the training um, Diversity and Health Equity, or TIDE, office. And he is going to give us an overview of the activities that have been going on um, in the past and a look into the future as well, I believe. All right. As we get the slides up, I just want to... Um say this is really a, a great opportunity for me to just come and reflect uh, on the last three years of the Training Diversity and Health Equity Office and to share with you some of the things that have gone on. And um, I've had the opportunity over the last three years to, to meet with you on several occasions to talk about our efforts uh, with regards to training diversity and health equity. And I just want to thank you for that um, and that work that um, we've been involved in together over the last three years. Um, so I decided to title um, my talk, Looking Back and Looking Forward in HGRI's Training Diversity and Health Equity Program, um, as a way of really kind of framing where we are here in 2024 uh, with regards to this program. And you may recall um, back uh, when we first started in 2021, um, I used this metaphor of the marathon for the development of the program with a recognition that um, it's going to take a group working together, um, all going in the same direction, uh, and it's going to take time uh, to complete the work um, and to meet the goals that we've identified. So this metaphor, I believe, continues to be an important metaphor uh, for our program today. So I want to start by actually looking back and highlighting a couple things that have happened uh, over the last three years with regards to our training, diversity, and health equity initiatives. First, uh, NHGRI published in January of 2021, Building a Diverse Workforce Action Agenda. Uh, in, let's see here. in April, of 2021, the TIDE office was established in the Office of Director. So Eric Green established the office uh, in January of uh, 2020, excuse me, in April of 2021. And then third, in uh, 2021, NH uh, NHGRI began recruiting the staff for this new office, uh, which have been essential in the work that has been done over the last three years. And then the training uh, lead for the uh, Genome Institute in the extramural program, uh, at that time, Dr. Lucia Hindorf became part of that TIDE office. And that was essential with regards to really uh, creating a, a strong relationship with our focus on workforce diversity with our overall training program by having the training lead be a member of the training office. And the TIDE office, in partnership with other NHGRI units, developed initiatives to advance genomic health equity and to conduct health disparities research. That's really a, a kind of quick overview of some of the things that have gone on over the last three years. But to put this in context, we really need to go back to 2020 and to explore where we are today from the perspective of what we incorporated in the strategic vision in 2020 that was published in 2020. And I just want to highlight uh, three of the guiding principles and values uh, for human genomics that we identified in 2020 that are core to the mission of the Training Diversity and Health Equity Office. Out of those nine um, values and principles, these three are core to the work that we're doing. Uh, and the first one that I want to highlight is the principle of the promise of genomics cannot be fully achieved without attracting, developing, and retaining a diverse workforce, which includes individuals from groups that are currently underrepresented in the genomic enterprise. This has been a really core part of the efforts and our activities over the last three years of a recognition that we must continue to enhance the diversity of the workforce who's doing uh, the genomics work both in the United States and globally, uh, and the context of this with regards to uh, the future of the field. Um, so within um, that process, we established this action agenda. And the action agenda really provides what I describe as aspirational goals and a roadmap 
for this work that we're doing with regards to enhancing diversity of the workforce. And if you have not had a chance to look at the, the roadmap, I encourage you, as uh, Erica has identified, it is on, on genome.gov and, and is available to you. At that same time, um, Eric and I had the opportunity to publish a commentary in the American Journal of Human Genetics talking about um, the key imperative, the strategic scientific imperative of a diverse workforce uh, for the field. So what are the four goals that are identified? First, to develop and support initiatives that provide early exposure and access to careers in genomics. Second, to develop and support training programs and networks that connect undergraduate and graduate education to careers in genomics. And third, to develop and support training career development and research transition programs that lead to independent research and clinical careers in genomics. I want to just highlight that ultimately helping people to get to be independent, either as a researcher or as a clinician uh, involved in the field. And all of this requires evaluating our progress uh, and, and a, toward achieving those goals. And I, I, we're really happy to be working with Dr. Gunter uh, on some of the work around the T32 program and its evaluation uh, as one first step of kind of looking back at how we're doing um, as an institute. Uh, but at this point, I just want to take a moment and to acknowledge the current and former members of the Thai team who have advanced these initiatives. Uh, and none of the work that I'm talking about would be done or without them. Um, I'm just here presenting for that group. And I recognize not everyone from the Thai team is in the room, but those that are in the room, I would just ask that you stand for a minute. This group of individuals have been very focused with both passion and a commitment to this work over the last three years, uh, and I just want to recognize them. And I also want to recognize the two individuals that have been part of the team that are no longer here, uh, both uh, Lucia Hendorf and Largetta Schools. Both of them played an extremely important part in the work um, that I'm talking about today. So let me start by talking about the first area that the TIDE office is focused on, and that is training. Uh, and as I stated, um, one of the steps that we took was that the training lead would be within the office of TIDE. And that was really to bridge and bring together our training team with the efforts and activities that we were really refocusing around training and workforce diversity for the Institute. <laughs> And I want to acknowledge the members of the training staff, the training team, uh, for the work that they're doing and their partnership with the TIDE office. Uh, and I want to just highlight here, and I included Lucia on this slide, even though she's no longer here because of her important role that she played. Um, but the training team has been committed to working closely with the TIDE office. And I would like to ask all the members of the training team that are here uh, to please stand. And I want to thank them. And I want to give a, a very special shout out to Heather Cowley because of the important role that she's played, uh, both with the transition of Lucia leaving the Institute, um, but uh, her role over the years with regards to our training program. So our training program is involved in a lot of different efforts and activities. Uh, NHGRI has expanded the types and stages of training opportunities that we fund. And today, NHGRI supports more than 500 trainees. Uh, and this slide here has two photos from the last uh, training workshop uh, conference that was in Seattle, uh, and just shows really the vibrancy that we have in our training program uh, and the ability to build this bridge with regards to new initiatives and mechanisms that we're using to enhance diversity in training with our traditional training program and as we expand that. And I just want to acknowledge the, the work that's going on uh, with regards to overall training within our institute. Um, one of the activities that the TIDE office in the last three years was to provide the genomics community an online toolkit 
to aid training programs with strategies and tracking their trainees' careers and their continued involvement in science and the field of genomics. Uh, this toolkit is available online um, that you can use from the perspective of your own academic institution. It was particularly developed for training directors um, that were involved with our different programs. But it really is an opportunity to use different strategies to be able to follow the careers of our trainees and to look at the success and who stays in genomics and who leaves and, and just kind of how can we stay more engaged with trainees uh, throughout their careers. So I, I encourage you to, um, to look at this toolkit and uh, provide us feedback as we continue uh, to use that and evolve it. So within the workforce diversity and genomics initiatives that we're doing, I want to highlight just a couple areas. And I, I want to just take a moment that I'm not giving a full survey of everything that's going on. I'm giving you highlights uh, just to recognize some of the activities going on. I'm happy to take questions on any topic. Um, but just to give you some sense of, of the efforts and activities that have been going on over the last three-year period. Uh, and one of the areas that I would just like to highlight, uh, which I think has been a really uh, great program, that is a training program, but is a, a program that's focused on workforce diversity, is the genome research experiences to attract talented undergraduates into genomics field to enhance diversity, or the GREAT program. The GREAT program supports students at undergraduate level to provide them exposure to genomics and training opportunities uh, at both their home institution that are often minority serving institutions and summer experiences at genomic research intensive institutions. A number of the institutions have been funded with this program and students from this program have presented now at the last two training uh, workshops. And I'm looking over at Nancy. We both uh, heard uh, a number of the trainees present both in Salt Lake City and then in Seattle. Uh, and really the excitement and exposure of bringing these students into the field of genomics. Uh, in 2022, NHGRI established the Diversity Centers for Genome Research Program with the National Institute of Mental Health and the National Institute of Minority Health and Health Disparities to expand the institutions that can con conduct research and training of students in the field of genomics. Um, we're really excited about this program uh, and the goals of the program to enhance diversity in genomics research, to carry out innovative state-of-the-art genomic uh, research studies, to foster genomics research career development and enhancement, to improve the genomic infrastructure, computational, analytical, and LC research capabilities at minority serving institutions, and to establish sustainable partnerships and disseminate resources and findings. Um, the, this program um, really is an opportunity to bring new institutions into our field as well as to bring new faculty and trainees in our field. And we're pleased that the first round of funding, uh, University of Hawaii, University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley, and Meharry Medical College um, were awarded um, funds uh, and are the first round uh, of this program. We look forward to the future of this program. So now I'm going to shift slightly when we talk about workforce diversity and how we as an institute are seeking to encourage uh, our colleagues across the country and to recognize individuals for their great work. Um, the TIDE office implemented uh, the program to recognize both Dr. Betty uh, J. Graham, uh, but to recognize our colleagues with regards to their work on diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility. Uh, we've now uh, had two rounds of this where six awardees have been recognized in the past two years. This is a way to make sure that our community is recognized important work that's going on within academic institutions and with faculty and researchers across the country, but to recognize the work that goes on within the institute. And we see this as an important part of our enhancing and recognizing um, workforce diversity and accessibility and equity. Uh, within our field. The TIDE office has partnered with the NHGRI's Intramural Scientific Director's Office and the Office of Intramural Training at NHGRI to provide training opportunities for postdoctoral trainees in our intramural program. 
Uh, this program's mission is to train the next generation of leaders in the field. So TIDE is active in our extramural program, but TIDE is also active in our intramural program, that we're working in collaboration with our scientific director and uh, investigators in our intramural program to promote the efforts and the mission of the office. And so the flagship program is one of those efforts where we are co-funding with the scientific director efforts and activities to enhance um, the participation of individuals within our intramural research program. We are also working with the Food and Drug Administration Office of Minority Health and Health Equity. The TIDE has partnered to recruit and train fellows interested in regulatory science, genomics, minority health, and health equity. And the fellowship provides the trainees the opportunity to be, to be exposed to and to participate in research within NHGRI's intramural program and the FDA. Um, the fellows spend time both at both agencies um, within their training program. Uh, the first two fellows uh, have completed the program. We are now, a new fellow is joining so that there will be a cohort of ultimately three individual fellows participating at any one time uh, in this program uh, with the uh, Office of Minority Health and Health Equity at the FDA. So I'm going to now change in and talk about really the research efforts and activities that we're involved in. We've talked about training. We've talked about workforce diversity. I want to talk about uh, the mission of the office uh, and really uh, facilitating, promoting, and supporting health disparities research and health equity in genomics. Uh, and I want to just start by going back to the principles and visions from the strategic vision in 2020. Uh, where the vision um, nine guideline, guide, guiding principles and values included uh, to maximize the usability of genomics for all members of the public, including the ability to access genomics and healthcare, health equity in genomics. Uh, and so this, too, is a fundamental part of the work that the TIDE office has been involved. Uh, and one of the areas and opportunities here that we've been involved in, in partnership with four other institute centers and offices at NIH, is uh, the work that we're doing with investigator-initiated research. Uh, here, um, seeking investigators to, uh, to conduct research that would address health disparities and advance health equity. And prior to publishing the funding opportunity, the TIDE office uh, held a community workshop to identify research gaps and opportunities to improve health equity. And I just want to thank Judy for being one of the co-chairs of that workshop. So really seeking to have the community uh, investigator-initiated research opportunities that will advance our work that we're doing around health equity uh, within and genomics uh, within the office. The TIDE, in partnership with the NHGRI Intramural Research Program, has provided two rounds of research supplements to investigators within our intramural program to support their research uh, that also supports conducting health disparities research and health equity and genomics. So giving those investigators an opportunity to have more resources to actually put more energy and focus on these issues that can have an important role in advancing health equity and genomics and addressing uh, health disparities questions. And so this is an important part of the work that has been conducted. So the last principle that I want to highlight um, from the 2020 Strategic Vision uh, is uh, the, the, the principle to strive for global diversity in all aspects of genomics research, committing to the systematic inclusion of ancestrally diverse and underrepresented individuals in major genomic studies. We all recognize the importance of this. Uh, our institute-wide is taking efforts to enhance the diversity of our, our research participants in our studies. This is an important issue for the field and will continue. Uh, but I just want to give you an example. One thing that we decided to do with our intramural program um, that is valuable part of helping our investigators in our intramural program. So the TIDE office has partnered with the NHGRI's clinical director and investigators to provide resources to support enhancement of diversity of study participants in the NHGRI intramural research program. The toolkit is a pilot program to assess how TIDE can support research recruitment of underrepresented groups 
in the intramural research program and lessons learned that can be for the broader genomics community. So really trying to work in a much more um, personal way with investigators on strategies to enhance diversity, uh, to reach underrepresented groups uh, for their research studies. Uh, and so we see this as an important part of our work um, that's focusing here, but that can um, have value and benefit for the broader uh, community. So the last area I want to talk about is community engagement efforts um, of the TIDE office. Uh, and just to recognize that uh, building partnerships and engagement, particularly with diverse communities, is an extremely uh, important part of the work for the office and for the institute and for the field. And I'm just going to highlight a couple examples. There are a number of examples we could go into, but I just want to give you a couple examples of things that have happened over the last three years. Uh, so the first is in 2021 and 2022, TIDE hosted um, several roundtables uh, with historically black colleges and universities, historically black medical schools, uh, with Hispanic serving institutions, and then with industry leaders, genomic industry leaders, where we brought them together to have conversations uh, related to the mission of the TIDE office to promote, promote awareness of what NHGRI programs were and what we were involved in but to learn more about the needs of these institutions and organizations. So really an opportunity to continue to engage and work with people to, to create a network of individuals who are interested uh, in the mission of our training diversity and health equity programs. The another example I would give, and the, the Smithsonian has come up several times today, is an example of ongoing work that we're doing with the National Museum of African American History and Culture to engage the public with uh, genomics, to expose them to genomics, uh, and uh, really to reflect on what are the interests of the community, but also to share with them and to provide opportunity uh, to present scientists that are across this country uh, that are doing important work um, that happened to come um, from uh, the African-American community. Um, this is just an example of the kinds of activities as we work across diverse uh, communities across the country and work. Um, I want to share uh, this um, network diagram here as an example of how TIDE is a bridge or a facilitator to support the advancement of training, workforce, diversity, and health equity mission of the Institute. Uh, clearly, this work requires the participation of all of us. And this, this network diagram presents the units within NHGRI and NIH and the extramural community that the TIDE office has worked with to advance the mission. So you see the TIDE office in the middle. But if you look across, and then if you just get some sense of the number of different units within our institute, as well as different areas within NIH, and then working with the extramural community to advance this work. Uh, it takes all of us uh, to advance the work that we're doing uh, and a recognition um, that none of us can do this alone. Um, the hard work that has been going on. And I, I want to just thank all my colleagues from NHGRI who have been committed to this work over the last three years um, because it really has taken all of us to get as far as we have with regards to our efforts. So in closing, I want to again recognize and thank the TIDE staff and the training team for their commitment to advance training, workforce diversity, and health disparities research at the Institute. And I also want to thank and, uh, this, and, and acknowledge the support of the NHGRI leadership, both in the extramural community and the intramural community, uh, for their support in different initiatives, helping to facilitate this work. It takes all of us, and I just want to thank you uh, for your work. Uh, this is a marathon and not a sprint. Uh, and the NIH uh, Unite initiative has used this saying, together we're stronger. And so I'm taking it for the purposes of our conversation here today uh, to recognize that the work together is what has really made all the things that we've done so far to happen uh, and that leads to this point. 
So finally, I am honored at this time to pass the baton to the new director of the Training Diversity and Health Equity Office, Dr. Robert Rivers. I know he will move forward the work of the office and NHGRI's commitment to advanced genomics training, workforce diversity, and health equity research. Uh, I present to you at this point Dr. Rob Rivers uh, so that he can make some comments and then we both will take questions from you. But I am just so excited that Rob is here uh, and the opportunity for him to kind of bring in a new level of energy and focus with regards to our efforts within the Tide Office and our training, diversity, and health equity work. Thanks. Thank you, Vince, and thank you, everyone. Indeed, they're huge shoes to fill, and we have so much work to do. As a runner, I decided I should cut my hair so the photo you saw didn't actually match me, because we need to be as aerodynamic as possible. We're facing tight physical budgets, and that's going to be time where we're going to sometimes feel like we need to shrink the pie or double down on what we do without having the creativity or flexibility to continue thinking, what more can we do? So our goal, working together, because it takes all of us, is to ensure that we continue our investments in training, continue ensuring that we're at the forefront of genomics by having enough individuals in the science, ensuring that the science that's being done across NHGRI and across NIH in general reflects the full diversity of the nation, and we're addressing health disparities and working towards health equity in the work we do. This is hard work. It's not easy work. And this isn't work we just started after 2020. This is work that we're all committed to doing. It's gonna be hard. But if we do it with joy, grace, and intellectual curiosity, I know we can make not only a difference, but my goal is that we don't need me to have this job anymore. When we do training and we by default know that training is a diverse space, that's what success will look like. So let's work together to get there. Um, and at that point, I think we're standing between you and lunch, so we'll take questions. Go ahead, Nancy. Not a question, but I, I did want to just really commend the training group. Um, I have seen them time and time again at the NHGRI training meetings, really helping people to get done hard things that they wanted to get done. They're so knowledgeable and so helpful. And everybody goes to them with all kinds of questions. And actually, some of the things that they've helped me to know about has changed the way we educate people it, coming into our grants administration because they're, they referred us to a lot of really good materials online that people can use to learn how to re do really good grants. And it's been hugely helpful. But I've seen them do it over and over again at these meetings to help people. And I just, it, it's just such a useful thing that we have that meeting every year. And I know it's expensive, but it's just, it's an amazing meeting, and it's extremely useful for, for program directors and for the trainees. And it's a, and a shout out to Rudy, too. He's taught generations of young people what peer review done well should look like. And I, I the, the, certainly the trainees have always appreciated it, but lots of faculty members have appreciated it as well. So, so thank you all for, for the activities you do that, don't, that extend NHGRI's impact in the community, truly. Uh, I would really want to echo uh, what Nancy said and commend all the efforts that have been you know, invested in this program. And I think your last slide was uh, very impressive in terms of you know, the different domains that TIDE is covering. Um, 
And I think particularly the emphasis on early exposure is very important so that th those are the young individuals that will become future leaders and investigators. Uh, one comment I had is that fr going from, one, uh, from early exposure to the extreme of um, other end of the spectrum, which is collaboration globally. I think the H3 Africa program, I think, was critical. And I know that has had to kind of sunset. But um, I think because uh, we are a melting pot, those glo global collaborations are really critical for our own citizens and for advancing the science. So I think that's something uh, to keep in mind in future initiatives. Yeah, as always, Vince, I think your wisdom really shows. Um, uh, I think your metaphor of the marathon is perfect. Um, we've seen some state institutions eliminating their diversity offices. We've seen corporations eliminating their diversity offices. And of course, the Tide is more than just a diversity office. It does a lot more than that. Um, but I think keeping, uh, framing this as a marathon is something, it, it's not good enough to do it from 2020 to 2024. It needs to be done, as you said, this was going on before 2020 and it needs to keep going on. We're not gonna get where we wanna get. We're not gonna eliminate your job, Rob, for <laughs> at least another decade. But we, we need to keep up the momentum. We need to keep up the work. And it's really wonderful to see the baton is, is passing to someone who's, who's got the, um, you know, who's keeping that marathon in mind. So thanks. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you both. All right, we're gonna take half an hour for lunch. Um, you can stay on the Zoom call, but turn your mic and uh, video off if you want to, and we will rejoin. Let's do five after one. <laughs>